Hey friends and welcome back to the channel and today I've got something different for you. Welcome to Pop Culture. This is the first video of a series where I deconstruct the best advice in pop culture TV shows and movies. So I recently watched The Queen's Gambit and it was one of my favorite shows in a very long time. And as I was watching it, I thought about all the great lessons in it on how to manage one's career. So here's everything that I've learned coming up and number one, the importance of having a mentor. So in the show, Elizabeth starts out as a little kid with a mentor called Mr. Scheibel. And when you think about it, Elizabeth wouldn't have been a chess player if it wasn't for Mrs. Scheibel. He was the one that introduced her to chess, all the openings, gave her books, and also acted as a father figure in her early years. And so when you're starting your career, one of the greatest things you can do is having a mentor. Many, many years I used to work at a bank. And in that job, I was very lucky to have someone look over my work and help me early in my career. And because of that, I was able to grow a lot faster and learn new things quicker. But sometimes it's a little bit hard to find a mentor in your job, or maybe you do something on your own and there's no one really to guide you. So for example, right now I'm an entrepreneur and there's no one really here to guide me along the way. And so what I do right now is follow Derek Sivers' advice and think about it in terms of invisible mentors. And you can do the same. And here's how. Think of the people that you look up to in life. It doesn't need to be someone that you know, just someone that you look up to. Then when you run into a problem, try to write it down in as much detail as you want. And imagine that you're trying to write to your hero. And so because your hero has no context at all, really try to be descriptive in your problem, add as much context as you need, your options and your opinions on each one of them. And so the next logical step will be to send them this dilemma that you have. But before you do that, try to predict what they would reply and then go into your problem and update as much as needed. Maybe you need more context or maybe one of the options is already out of the way. And then repeat the same process over and over again. And by repeating this process, eventually you're gonna solve the problem by yourself without the need of a mentor. And so that's really the process that I use now. I think of my heroes, what would they say? What would they help me with my problems? And try to come up with a solution by myself by predicting their response. And so Beth had a great mentor in Mr. Scheibel, but she wouldn't be able to reach her full potential if she didn't have the drive to always be learning. So one of the things that you see throughout the series is that Elizabeth is always picking up a chess book or learning new moves or learning with other people. And so she has this drive to learn more about the game itself, almost like an obsession. But if like Beth, you wanna reach your full potential, it truly helps that you try to always be learning within your field. Talent by itself is not enough. You need to cultivate a learning mindset. And nowadays, there's so much information out there in the world for free that you can learn anything you want. Even on YouTube itself, there's millions and millions of videos that you can watch that will give you the skills that you need. One of my favorite ways of learning new things is throughout books. And so what I do is I reserve 30 minutes in the morning to always be reading a book. And that might not sound like a lot of time, but 30 minutes every day really compounds over the weeks, over the years. And then you can take the new skills, the new things that you are learning and apply them to your work and apply them to your life. And when you apply these new skills that you now have acquired, things are gonna be a little bit more difficult. And that's less than a to always challenge yourself. So Beth is always punching above her weight. As an example, she enters and wins the Kentucky State Championship at age 15, with the help once again from Mr. Scheibel. And she also travels the country and the world, facing the best competition, always with a lot of money on the table. And in a way, that's why she grows so quickly as a chess player. Now, you can also use competition on your day-to-day -day life to bring the best out of you. And what I mean by this is that when you embrace competition as a way to grow your skills, even when you fail, you can see it as a win. Because yes, you might not have the win that you wanted, but at least you have learned something new. And the way that I like to think about this is to set ambitious goals for myself. Now, how do I do this? Instead of setting a goal to the place where I think I can get, I push the line a little bit to make it more of a challenge. If you're familiar with Google's OKRs, I try to achieve the 80% of a goal, and then the last 20% is where I'm really trying to stretch myself. Does it get frustrating sometimes? Yes, but at the end of the day, at least I'm still pushing myself. And yeah, for me, that makes me more motivated. But despite all the talent, Harmon's weaknesses were quickly exploited by better players. And so in the end, to defeat them, Beth had to take a close look at her weaknesses. So she understood that she was only as good as chess player as her weaknesses. And so both Benny and Borikov correctly note that Beth is a highly emotional player to the point that would affect her play, particularly when she was losing. And so to become the best chess player in the world, she had to work through her emotions in order to stay calm even when she was losing. Now I've learned that most of the time you should just focus on your strengths because that's what's gonna provide the best ROI in your career. But sometimes a weakness is really pulling you back and so there's a lot of merit in exploring how you're not pushed back by that weakness anymore. And so here's an easy way to do this. Think of one or maybe two weaknesses that are really pulling you back. For me specifically, in my job, that was communication skills. Maybe I had the good ideas, but I was not good at communicating those ideas. I would say things in a very convoluted way. And so to fix that weakness, every day I would work a little bit on my communication skills. 
I would watch videos, I would take notes, I would ask other people for their feedback on what they think I was saying, and then I would compare that to what I actually wanted to say. And so by having this quick feedback loop, every day trying to fix my weakness, over time, I became a little bit better in communication. And now it was not holding me back anymore, thus enabling my strengths to shine. So now you know how to work on your weaknesses. And you'll see this is very similar to the way that Beth approached the work that she needed to do on her weaknesses. And that was structured practice. So in the show, Beth is always studying. But the reality is not all study is created equal. Going over her games and all the books that she read, that was a good start. But it wasn't really enough to take her to the next level. To do that, she had to focus on the right tactical patterns. And that was most clear when she lost to Borgov in Mexico. In that game, Borgov was able to outmaneuver her with an expected opening. She needed to prepare herself more in a tactical manner. And so when she returned home, Harry Beltic offered to train Beth. And instead of just playing game after game, they looked at specific concepts. And by introducing this structure into her training, she was able to distill patterns a lot quicker and eventually beat Benny Watts in the US Championship match and climb the title. So now think how you can implement structure in your practice. What are the areas that you should be targeting each day? And what is the best way to learn about those things? Come up with a plan of the things that you need to learn and how specifically you're gonna structure your learning in a way that helps you grow faster. And then take the most of each practice session by implementing deep work. Full concentration in a habit is very hard to do unless you make it a habit. So choose a specific time of your day, 100% focus on the task of structured learning. All right, let's move on to number six, self-sabotage. So Beth and her mother suffer from self-sabotage. Despite her talents, her mother never fulfills the dream of being a musician. Instead, she turns to alcohol and pills and never achieves her goals. And so in her darkest times, Elizabeth does the same and ruins her chances to defend her title as state champion of Kentucky. And why is that? Because the reality is most of the times we are our own worst enemies. We actively go against our well-being because the consequences are only in the future. In other words, by giving in to your bad habits today, you are robbing future you from the opportunities you might otherwise have. So for example, one night of drinking isn't really that impactful, but a whole week or whole month is gonna set your career a little bit back. And also without momentum on your side, it's really hard to implement a good habit. So think of the ways that you're self-sabotaging yourself and how you can stop doing them and instead focus on building good habits. And the best way to do that is by being systems oriented and goal driven. So goals give our life meaning and direction. One of the reasons Beth is so successful is her obsession on becoming the best chess player in the entire world. That's the goal that drives her to continue to compete at the highest level. And so when she loses sight of that goal, everything falls apart. It's only when she focuses back on her goal of beating Borgov that she exits her depressive state and regains the will to train. And so goal setting is a very personal experience. Some people prefer longer timelines, some people prefer shorter timelines. For me specifically, I like to set goals in terms of quarters. From my experience, 90 days really hits the spot in terms of timelines. It's long enough to think big, audacious goals, but short enough to lock execution over and over again. So yes, of course I have a vision of 25 years, but that is a little bit hard to translate on a day-to-day -day operations. And so by just focusing on what I need to do in the next 90 days, I have a clear picture and a clear objective for the next foreseeable future. And then I translate that 90-day plan into weekly things that I need to do. And then every three months, I'll review my goals, I'll review my tasks, and I remind myself of lesson number eight, which is to put your life in perspective. Constantly comparing yourself to others is a sure way to make you unhappy. Think about Beth, she had everything she ever wanted, but still she was unhappy. And there's a moment in the series where Jolene is driving with her and she tells her a sentence that was very beautiful. It went like this. You've been the best at what you do for so long, you don't even know what it's like for the rest of us. And I think that perspective really hit Beth when Mr. Scheibel died. By going back to the origins, to the place where she first learned chess, reminded her of why she wanted to play chess in the first place, her love of the game. And so being happy with what you have is essential to have a long and happy career. Ambition is great, but when it comes at a cost of losing sense of your perspective, you can fall at a moment's notice. Coming up at number nine, the importance of teamwork. In the final episodes, it's very clear the stark difference between how Americans and Soviets approach the game of chess. The Soviets work as a team to prompt up their best player, which is Borgov. And so in a world before computer analysis, that extra brain power to analyze positions and strategies was crucial to win the games. And in the end, that was also the key to best success. By having everyone back in America think of all the positions and all the strategies to the end game, 
she was able to defeat Borgo. So the lesson for me there is that when you think of a team, one plus one doesn't equal two. Most often, one plus one equals three. And that reminds me of something, which is if you wanna go fast, you can go alone, but if you wanna go far, go together. And so even on this YouTube channel, for example, you only see me on camera here, but there's a whole team behind me helping me craft better videos for you, better thumbnails, and also editing the videos. Now, would I be able to do that all by myself? Yes, I do have all those skills, but it will also take me a lot more time because I'm not specialized in all of them. And so by having specialized people, for example, in video editing or in thumbnail design, we are able to craft better videos for you guys. And that leads me to my final point, which is to surround yourself with like-minded people. So in the series, both Harry Beltic and Benny Watson take an interest in Elizabeth's career and try to help her reach her full potential. For example, Benny was the one that incentivized Elizabeth to pursue her dream and go to Moscow. Because he had been there before, he had previous experience, he could guide Beth on the complicated process of making the trip. So in the same way, when you surround yourself with ambitious people that hold you accountable for your results, you start to act differently. And that will help you grow and also stay focused on your goals. And in the right context, it will even make you work harder. So think of all the people that you want to surround yourself with in order to become more motivated. But sometimes it's still a little bit overwhelming. And in that times, I have a simple strategy to stop being overwhelmed. If you want to find what that is, go over here to watch my next video on how to stop being overwhelmed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.